Hi everyone, it's Eve Atley Blowitz from spiritgirl.com and welcome to the Spirit Girl Talk Show podcast. I'm super excited to be here with you today and our very special guest, Dr. Dara Goldberg, who's a licensed clinical psychologist who specializes in therapy, dream work and meditation to help women or all people live in their true light at any stage of their life. Dr. Dara Goldberg is also the author of Awaken Your Inner Goddess, which offers practical tools for self-care, emotional healing, and self-realization. Dr. Dara Goldberg, welcome and welcome to our Spirit Girl audience. It's so incredible to have you here with us today. How are you? I'm good. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you. Congratulations on the launch of your book, Awaken Your Inner Goddess, which is available on Booktopia here in Australia, as well as Barney's and Noble, Amazon.com. I mean, there's so many places. How does it feel to have your book launched and out and you're here chatting with myself and the global Spirit Girl audience? You know what? It feels like I answered the calling. That's, that's the best and really only way that I can put this. I would say it's something that I didn't know I was working on for my whole life, but it was kind of there, you know, and there was little sparks along the way. And when it kind of, it happened, I would say it happened that it wasn't like I set out to write a book. It kind of like started pouring out of me and not even in any kind of book like form. It was like a blog. And it was because that it was just bursting out of me. Like I had this something to share and I had to do it. <laughs> Um, I watched this Jungian summit and they talk about the call and purpose. And I was really relating to how people were talking about when you get the call to do something, it's just, it's harder not to do it. And this was not easy. I mean, I was, if I was going to do this, I'd be like, okay, when my kids are older or in school or we're not all locked down and I mean, I, I'm still kind of like, what is happening? must be so exciting to see the book out and for all of that work to come to fruition and now you've got so many people reading it. That is exciting because, you know, I've always been an empath. I guess that's the word everyone kind of knows now. And I was just like, I just want everyone to feel loved and no one to feel alone. The end. Like, <laughs> that's it. You are You have a special purpose on earth and I just feel like it's really hard for people to know that sometimes. And I just wish I could go tell every single person that. So that's why this is here. I'm like, I just, I feel positive that this is the truth that you are like, everyone is special and worthy of love. And you need to know that. Everyone. Oh, wow. And when it came to the book title, Awaken Your Inner Goddess, is that literally the underlying message for that book title? I would say when the title, you know, it got all titled and this was like the fun stuff at the end, you know, this is the part where you like just start celebrating and you're like, oh my God, the hard part's over. Now we're having fun. I kind of wanted to tell like, you know, the academic community and like all the people, I'm like, don't judge a book by its cover. Listen, <laughs> like, it's, I know it's goddessy and <laughs> like if everybody knew what it took to get to because, you know, I, I would say if you if you're going to use the word goddess, like you better be prepared. <laughs> I mean, it holds weight and there's a reason for it. Right. And I think we're all here kind of like it's kind of a feminist movement a little bit, you know, a lot. Right. To me, it has a lot of connotations to the patriarchy and kind of old structures crumbling that have to do with like fear and lack mentality and survival mentality because people were afraid of the power of intuitive women. I mean, that's just what it is. And I've experienced that in my life and you can't really like name it. You can't be like, I know that because you know, it's all empathy and it's not one of the five senses and there's no empirical basis and there's no study that says like, what's going on is this. And, and so to use that word, it kind of encompassed all of the feminine energy that I was like, this is all here and we are all holding it and it wants to come out now. It, it's just it's like birth it was like birthing a baby that is so <laughs> incredible so dr dara goldberg how did you initially get into psychology and what inspired you to learn psychology 
said, I've always been an empath. My dad is a very Western medical doctor, right? And he was like, you know, I was like born saying all these spiritual things and what are you, what are you talking about? And my dad's like, um, no one's going to take you seriously. So you're going to have to study and you're going to have to use all the words that everybody's using to explain what it is that you're trying to talk about. So I studied for like decades. How did you get into spirituality? Yeah, no, I would say that was already all there. I'm wearing my unicorn because I don't know if there's any last unicorn fans out there, but I would say like the unicorn represents to me like spirituality that was like, oh, is that real? Is that in this realm? You know, and in the movie, the witch has to put like a fake horn on her. So people are like, oh, that's a unicorn, right? And I had the kind of, I, I was raised... I was never told anything spiritual. I was told I was crazy to be thinking anything intuitive, anything that had to do with dreams, anything, but yet it never went away. And it was the reason that I'm like still standing, honestly, it was all those like winks from the universe and like, you're supposed to be what you are and you should feel loved as who you are. When it comes to radical acceptance, what tips could you give to our listeners who are tuning in and go, you know what, I want to be radical. I want to accept myself. I want to love myself. The most radical thing you could do is start that. Um, you know that expression they say like there's two wolves and which one is the one? It's the one you feed, right? Like there's going to be the wolf that says the positive things or the negative things. It's the one you feed. So radically feed what it is that you want to see grow. You know, like like a seed. Say everyone's a seed for a different kind of plant. Like feed your seed. And this is where the spiritual piece comes in. It comes from... The ego is the part that you're feeding with the external validation. And when you do things for self-care, like, you know, barefoot on the grass, drink water, listening to the high vibrational frequency music, right? Your feed is now going to come from a much higher place. You're going to be filled with light and the light's going to come. You're going to light up from the inside, connect from the inside out, not the outside in and trust yourself. Like when you're filled with that light and you can trust that you have something to offer society and you just radically believe that you are so important, so important to do what you came here to do. But we have to start being less about the ego feeding and more about like filling ourselves with that inner light of being who we came here to be. Yeah, I love that. You mentioned the music there. Can you share more about that? Meditative Mind is the best channel. It's my favorite. It's on YouTube. And trust your intuition. Your, your intuition will lead you to the sounds that sound good for you, sound healthy for you. And you could say it in terms of like it clears your chakras, it raises your vibration. Um, and I honestly believe there's a huge connection between this and the physical health of the organs. But I look at it in terms of like you're having something really healthy before you grab junk food. And once you raise your vibration, you listen to the frequency. And I, I would say it's an art finding the right frequency because if you're like really sad, you're not gonna align to like happy music, right? You're gonna, and you're gonna align to something. And that's why I love the channel because it doesn't have words. It's just the frequency. It's telling you like that part of you needs attention. And if you feed it with the healthy frequency, then your next steps are going to be determined by a much smoother running system that's not craving junk food. And of course, in spa therapy, we too use music, which can really shift energy if we're really stressed and tensed and anxious and, you know, all wound up. And it can really relax us and, and calm the mind. It's all soul food, basically. You're, you're eating something, your soul is receiving something, your body is absorbing something. And yes, there's even, um, it'll say even on the song, like this is a good to clear the energy of your house. And, you know, I think the main thing is an awareness that we're not just our mind, we're not just our bodies. We're a whole combination. And you can, you know, you can sit in a whole psychotherapy for an hour and think your way through everything. But if you're not grounded in your body, and that's what the music does, you're not going to connect it. And it's not going to be holistic. You know, you'll be able to think your way through it, but then you'll be craving the spiritual junk food 10 minutes later because your leg is like cramping because there was really something energetic about that that wasn't in your conscious awareness, but it was in your body. And when, you know, you do movement with the music, it actually, and you know, people will get a massage and then they'll cry because it releases the fascia and, you know, so when you, you might not know it's there and you might be walking around driven by these 
motivations that you're not even aware of because they're stuck in your body. And even, you know, The Body Keeps the Score is a famous book about trauma and it, it's in yeah. there. You can try to think as much as you want. You can do the positive self-talk, but you have to have the combination because the stuff that's really there is going to be hiding, you know, because we're not ready to face it. We don't have the safe space to face it until you get into the safe space. And, you know, you, you say, I'm ready, I'm in a safe space. And then you do all the things to release it out of your body and then, you know, channel it or say goodbye, do the whole process. But I do think it's a multi, it's a very integral approach of many different factors. And this, the space of the house or wherever, no matter what space you're in, there can be lingering energy that you don't even realize is affecting you. Like sounds that are on in the background if you fall asleep and then you might have this bad dream because this commercial was on in the other room, you didn't even realize, but it's affecting you. So I think the whole thing is just have an awareness of what's affecting you and you get to choose what you feed yourself with. You know, a huge step we could take as humanity is that awareness of what feels right and what feels wrong. This is how we can all step into our power and consciously choose how we want this earth experience to be in terms of what frequency do we want to live at? Do we want to live at fear or do we want to raise our vibration and live at the love frequency? And what I want everyone to know is like, all it takes is you, one person, the radical awareness and acceptance of, I can choose to feed myself with this higher vibration. And when you walk around, everybody that is going to be affected by that. Right. I love that. And it's I love so that. easy. Like everyone, as long as people know they have the option, do like everyone has the option. You get to choose a huge opportunity actually for awakening. That's what I would say. That if I could just simplify it so it's a takeaway, this is everyone's opportunity for awakening to their own power, their own control, their own safe space. If I could give everyone a gift, it would be like you have your sanctuary within you. It's like a like a bomb shelter. It's all within you. Just go there. It's going to, you know, it might take different things for different people to get there. Maybe people, someone wants to like dance to a song. Someone wants to do a yoga pose or whatever. But once you know how to get to your sanctuary, just go there. Everything that you absolutely need to know will get to you, but without the valence of fear, like pure information without all the extra stuff that you don't need. And when you're in that frequency, you'll receive the information that you absolutely need to survive, but in like a loving package. I love that because I just wrote a post literally about go with the flow. And you know, literally it's go with ease and you can't control things. And you're literally uh, life will constantly change and unfold but what will be will be what did they say the only thing that's constant is change and that's you know to bring this all back to the whole spiritual through the psychological is you know earth school right like we're here to do the work we're here to to get through it in the way that creates as much love and connection as possible. That's what I think. You know, we're here to kind of like walk through the mud of this dense reality and finding the light the whole way. And once you kind of like get your head wrapped around the thing that makes you the most comfortable, whatever your belief system is, then you just follow the light and know that it's gonna change. There's gonna be the mud that we're gonna like be in the trenches. And that's what this human existence is for. But you can always go to that space where you're like, souls are eternal. That's, I believe that. And I think it is helpful for mental health. I would say you get to choose, you know, what, what you believe. But that to me has been like the trigger point for me that that was the whole awakening. That souls are eternal. This is a human experience. We're here to do the best we can. And the whole point is love and connection. Wow, I love that. So with your work, you've obviously seen an increase in people's anxiety. Second year, we're seeing more, I guess, depression kind of kick in because people are feeling a bit deflated. You know, they can't go on their usual holiday. You help a lot of people with mental health and, and getting through challenging times. You talk about the importance of really self-care. I'm a big believer that self-care right now 
needs to continually happen. It's so important. I would say accountability is humongous. It has I think that everyone is accountable for themselves. And part of this being like an earth process, I do believe that what you do is gonna come back to you, but it is gonna come back. And I am, I would say that I'm so sure of this, like you can doubt me, but I'm 100% sure. Like this is how it is. And if nothing else, it makes me be able to go throughout my day living it in such a healthy way, being like, I'm gonna take accountability for all of my own actions. And because I'm connected to the internal validation, I'm getting my, the food I'm getting is coming from like a higher source of light, which we are all, that's everyone's gifts, right? But ultimately, if we get a place where everyone is generated from the light inside, then ultimately these things would just be natural. When it comes to your own self-care rituals, what are some of the practices you do? that make you feel good and that have helped during the global pandemic as well. Barefoot on the grass is huge. I love it because I know there's an actual scientific, you know, something's happening with the electrons and ions and all that good stuff. So I actually can feel the difference. If you stand there for 20 minutes, I think you could actually, I don't know who could not feel a difference. Drinking water, they're so simple, but not to be taken for granted, which brings me to not taking anything for granted. (laughs) The musical frequencies is my absolute go-to. I mean, you can switch them up. I listen to it with like headphones, noise canceling, the outside noise canceling headphones. And automatically, like whatever I'm thinking or feeling that I'm afraid of, or like, why is this happening? I don't understand, or I'm worried about, it will take me to the place of what am I supposed to do? It clears out all the like clutter. And it's like, what do I do for the next best step? That's the next thing I would say is the next best step. You only write the power of now. You only have to think about what you're going to do right now. I mean, you want to also be practical and don't do something completely that's good, right? But like what next step can you do that's sort of in alignment? And baby steps. You don't have to make huge strides. Some days are so hard. It's like hard to even like wake up, get dressed, take it. Like do not underestimate the very first step you take. Like it might not look like a lot. It might not look like you've gone far, but what it took to take that step from where you were is like the equivalent of scaling a mountain. I feel like people should just know that. That is so super important. And then crystals, which, you know, I know that it's not scientific. It just makes me feel better. I would say like, I have crystals that I will just hold when I'm like, I don't, I don't even know what to do. And I'll fall asleep, like squeezing them. I'll be like, <laughs> and then I wake up and I feel better. So, you wow. know, you really can connect with the earth and all of the elements. When you talk about crystal, the energy from the crystal and even the grounding, that grounding is so feel good. There's actually a resort in the Maldives where you literally, it's called Gilly Lankan Fushi and you arrive in Mali you get on the boat right there, you put your shoes into a little bag because it's a barefoot island resort. It's also eco and sustainable, but the whole concept is you are getting a true island experience by wearing no shoes, walking on the sand. You would love that as an earthly person and any one of our Spirit Girl podcast listeners if you ever get the opportunity to go to Gilly Lankan Fushi and just be barefoot, and everyone's barefoot, the staff, all the guests, oh it's incredible, God. incredible experience. And it really re-energizes your, your energy and makes you feel better. Really natural way to raise the energy. Well, with that, that's on my bucket list for sure. The last thing I wanted to mention is the essential oils and the scents. That is almost like a taste of like another world, right? And if in the olden days, if someone would faint, you'd have like smelling salts, right? It would like bring the spirit back into the body. And so as much as it's important like to ground and then also to like wake up yourself to like the kind of like the higher realms in a way. And that's like the recipe for being connected, like the light going in and then grounded into the earth, you know, like. You're doing something on a healthy level. It's not just ego-based. It's like, what is it for the earth? How am I channeling this light into the earth? And then how is the earth feeding me with like natural elements from trees and 
that's how I think we can stay the most in balance. And if validation was based on that, and like, if you look at the, you know, we had talked a lot about the validation and like you're on the internet. What is the internet? It's like, you're just looking at a phone. There's no sun, there's no ground. You're just, you're totally removed. And you're just looking at literally a two dimensional version of what the real reality is. So if you bring yourself back, you're like, this is the reality. This is the, my feet are on the earth. I'm like pointed to the sun and then your life force energy will just self-activate. What is your wish for all of your book readers when they grab a copy of Awaken Your Inner Goddess? That we are all connected through this shared experience. We're all going through the global stuff together because of the internet. Like we're all able to know what's happening everywhere. And I want everyone to know like you can change it to what you want in a positive way. Like we are all connected. And if we're all reading something, that in itself is connecting us. So you do not have to feel alone. You are supported in your true self. And once you take that step into your true self, you're gonna feel it, you'll feel the net. So it's like everyone that reads it, it's like we're creating a bigger, bigger net. It's like, we got you. Even if you can't see us right now, energetically, it's there. Just like put your feet on the ground and feel the energy we're all holding you. <laughs> I love, love, love that. And how can we stay in touch with you after this podcast show too? So I do have the social media. I have to say, oh my God. <laughs> we do have to have it. I have. Uh, I mean, I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest. So I'm on there trying to make it a safe space. And I have to say, like, I feel all the things, right? So I guess that's good. It's like, I can feel it and be like, this does not feel good. And then like, try to implement change. So I will be there. <laughs> I am there trying to be like, come to this safe space and I will maintain it. You know, hopefully I can be on there as much as necessary. You know, I will all be hopefully divinely guided. But what I, I hope is that we all, everyone awakens to be that, caregiver for themselves and watch out for everyone else too like why why is everyone why does it be mean or like if you're mean do you want to talk about it yeah <laughs> like we, can, I love, we can figure it out together i love this so it's really interesting that you should say that i feel that as light workers we have to use the platform yeah. for the greater good nate nature is to help people we consciously just use it if we want to help and serve people Right. And I feel that if if we just defined use social media if you want to help and serve people, absolutely, then a lot of the content would probably go away. <laughs> I have advice. And I, I mean that advice. in the nicest way, but you know what I'm yeah. saying. If you filter it like that, that's you're sharing your gift, and you want to help someone and serve someone. Maybe you want to make them feel better. Maybe you want to enlighten them. Maybe you want to help them feel less anxious or stressed. But there's a purpose. Know your purpose. Know your intent. And just do that. Know your power. Okay, here's my bit of advice as like a human who has done this social media. Do not do it for likes and followers, right? Like it does feel so good. You're like, oh, you like what I said? You want to be part of this, you know, yeah. I mean, it feels so good that when, you know, you're like, did I say something wrong? Did I lose? Do I do not even look like I I'm like, oh, my God, someone's here. I'm so excited that I try not to ever even look at that. Like, follow your heart. And here's my advice from someone who's done it. Your energetic impact counts. Know your power. If you exist on the Internet, do it in the way of like, what message do you want out in the world? Who do you want to be in the world? It doesn't matter what kind of external validation you're going to get because you're going to get like light and you're going to get wounding, but focus on what you want to create. And if you focus on what you want to create, you might just magnetize in all the high vibrational stuff if you're vibrating at the love frequency. Like the more you're vibrating there, you'll magnetize in all the other love frequencies. So don't be disheartened by like, thumbs and followers and stuff just yeah the energy is real and it will get you on your right path you'll meet the people you're supposed to meet you'll connect with who you're supposed to connect with it's not about numbers it's not quantity it's quality yeah and you know there was something really interesting the other day whereas when you as an example may no longer be here 
that's when people might even discover you well beyond when you're gone and some of our greatest singers have really gone off badly after they've passed so the content when I look at the content that I create or we create I I look at it in a way of I guess legacy but it's the word called, the word. Yeah, yeah legacy so what is it if I'm here or I'm not here, do I want to be known for, remembered for, or what are my words of wisdom or messages for this generation and for more generations to come? Absolutely. And when I create content based on that, I'm really content and happy because it doesn't matter if it's five people today or 5,000 people in 20 years, like all that matters is I shared from my heart and soul to help and serve other people. And I'm content with that. Oh my God. That was so beautifully said. I'm I, That plus one. I agree. <laughs> well, I love you, Dr. Dara Goldberg. You're incredible. I love how you've meshed clinical psychology with spirituality. There is, it's a very unique offering psychology with spirituality very very unique it's not something we see every day when it comes to the medical practitioners but i love what you're doing spiritual psychology and i love how you are inviting everyone to awaken your inner goddess so thank you again dara for being on the spirit girl podcast show it's been an absolute pleasure and i'm super grateful thank you me too thank you so much been fun. So we'll say goodbye. So to our Spirit Girl podcast listeners, be sure to subscribe, to leave a rating and review, and to tell someone you love to. And together, let's feel good from within.